Hello Armaholics, so earlier today Bohemia Interactive sent out an awesome little tweet. In a nutshell, it's more or less our first proper look into Infusion, and if you have no idea what I'm babbling on about, Infusion is Bohemia Interactive's choice of game engine for its future projects, one of them, many of us hope, being Armour 4. Now, today's tweet probably marks something of an official introduction of Infusion to the community. Up until now, most of our screenshots have come from the community piecing together puzzle pieces that Bohemia Interactive released over a period of time. The various snippets of information we've got and further screenshots came from various demonstrations Infusion has been party to. So we're going to look at a few things here guys and girls, but I'm not going to cover every little thing nor any one thing in agonising detail. I'll leave the screenshots running in the background whilst I jump from one thing to the next like some kind of crazed monkey man. Do bear with me folks. Some of the things we already know or have suspected, and not everything you hear is going to be instantly linked to Armour 4. That being said, this is a game engine they plan on using for multiple projects including any possible future armor title. So probably a good place to start is with their headlining title on the Infusion page. It refers to Infusion as a representation of 20 years of game development packaged into a powerful toolset. Real virtuality, which has powered every iteration of armor, including the original Operation Flashpoint, infused with the Enforce engine, which has powered titles such as Shade, Wrath of Angels, Armor, Alpha Prime, Carrier Command and Take on Mars. Its ultimate aim is to provide the large vast open worlds most of us enjoy, created with higher quality visuals and performance provided by an up to date renderer, supported by multi threading wherever possible and a powerful and versatile Enforce script. Now couple this with a more or less full development toolkit for the community and uh, uh, sorry just hang on I'm salivating at the mouth here. Well, you get it, a theoretical armor fall seems even more appetizing right now. And if you read even more into the official web pages, it in all honesty appears that from the ground up this has modders in its mind and in its heart. We'll just read this little section of the FAQ. The question being, will you be able to use Infusion to make a completely new game? What are the license costs? Now, not wanting to get into the nitty gritty and legalities of it all, the short answer, as it stated, is yes, yes you can. That alone probably speaks volumes for how powerful this toolset can be. Although they don't currently plan getting standalone third party licenses or granting them, that's, as I said, I don't want to get into the legalities of that. But yes, you can see it's quite powerful indeed. As I previously suspected in my Armour 4 speculation video, uh, god that feels like a small age away, I mentioned that some of the older content, whether it be official or community made, might not be compatible due to the, you know, literally it being a new engine. I was correct to some degree, as larger modifications that utilise all the old scripting language will unfortunately have to be redeveloped from the ground up. However, for more physical things such as weapons and vehicles, it's actually suggesting that the pause will be the easier option rather than reworks. That is welcome news indeed. For the more code-based modifications, this may come as a bit of a blow, but I like to think and I like to hope it comes as an opportunity to come back bigger and better with the use of the involved scripting language. Now, aside from the uh, modding aspects, there's also reference to if uh, Behemoth Interactive are open to any future monetization of mods, to which it responds that we're not currently considering it at the moment, brackets beyond its creator DLC program. So do we take this as confirmation they'll be continuing this practice across not just a potential Armour 4, but create a DLC for their other projects as well? This is of course an Infusion web page, so it's across the spectrum and not really specific to any one project. It's an interesting one to be sure. You all know my opinion on this. I like Creator DLC. I like a curated experience at an appropriate price tag with more or less guaranteed post-release support. Sure, Armour 3 has had a couple of bumps on its Creator DLC experiment, or journey as it were, and even if it's, you know, you're not a fan of it, Bohemia Interactive have literally torn the lid off from the proverbial modding can for any future Armour title. So whether you're a fan or not, I think 
armor full or a potential armor full has a very, very bright future. You're probably asking, Hasbo, haven't we already seen Infusion in Daisy standalone? No and yes, uh, cutting aside all the faff, it's basically a hybrid that uses an earlier iteration of the Infusion renderer, coupled with the animation system and Enforce scripting, or Enforce however you want to pronounce it. Now I may be wrong, but if I was to surmise or make some kind of analogy about Daisy standalone, I'd put it like this. Take Real Virtuality's engine for the out of bed looking face, Apply some makeup, or slap as we like to call it, in the form of Infusion's renderer, tart it up with Infusion's animation system, and it's ready for a night on the town. Weird analogy to one side, Daisy's standalone contains a lot of legacy stuff, and as I mentioned in my previous video, it shouldn't be the game we base all our thoughts on Infusion's power and beauty on. That being said though, as a previous DayZ player, we saw an almost immediate and substantial performance gain when they somehow managed to kind of get the Infusion renderer in place. And that's without all the other Infusion components in place, it's kind of food for thought in that respect. Continuing on the subject of DayZ standalone, I think we've got to bear in mind many of its modders have had a head start when it comes to elements of the scripting language. So maybe, just maybe, when a potential Armour 4 does release, the modern community can kind of hit the ground running. I think it'll be a massive help in that respect. Right, I don't want to kind of get bogged down into the whole kind of Daisy standalone, so let's switch our focus up a bit. You might, alongside myself, be wondering what tangible things can come from this engine in relation specifically to ARM4. Of course, this will obviously be speculative, but for starters, uh, Voltin springs to mind straight away. Uh, we mentioned this in our previous ARM4 outing, but it's probably a safe guess ARM4 will feature, may feature, vaulting, jumping and climbing mechanics. We can of course bring Daisy back into the conversation, but also referencing the animation and procedural animation editors in the Infusion toolset FAQ. Oh, whilst we're tapping into procedural animations, could something be done with how the player model adapts to inclining or declining paths? I kind of think how Ghost Recon treats the player model uh, going down a steep hillside. Maybe not to that over the topness, but something adaptive. Even looking at how models move through mud, tall grass, or how they navigate tight spaces would be a real bonus here. I know there's only so much they can do because I can imagine real-time procedural animations being a big frame dragger, but there's definitely potential here. Water above sea levels springs to mind again. It's been done in DayZ, and if you've been paying close attention to the screenshot loop, there looks to be streams and ponds above what I would call um, sea levels. So I think that might be a given there, guys. Urban environments. Yes, again, I'm going to have to mention Daisy here, aren't I? Because it's the only kind of basis we have on Infusion's renderer. But it did wonders when dealing with Daisy's cityscapes or urban landscapes. But this was an actual early version and duct taped onto the RV engine. I can only imagine the types and the scales of environments they'll be able to create now. Uh, performance and optimization. I think it's quite clear that multi threading, wherever possible, is important to the dev team, as is scalability for different platforms, whether that be different consoles or different tiers of PC horsepower. Next big one for me is controls. It's a massive one in regards to a potential new armor experience. Again, Daisy went to some lengths to eliminate the old action wheel and integrate some controls to a single mouse click. Basically, it went context and surroundings based. They've had time to see what works now, so I'm hoping for a massive improvement from the kind of oops, I've just placed a charge moment, and big oops, I've just detonated my charge. Yeah, you there in the back, stop laughing. Innuendos to one side, I do encourage you to check out the official Infusion page. There's an extra screenshot or two in it for you, along with some information I've probably disregarded. Hey, I'm not doing all the work for you guys. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed the relatively short and sweet version. Will I do another Armour 4 speculation video in the future? Probably not. I don't really want to get all clickbaity. I've enjoyed growing the channel organically without the need to clickbait to a purely speculation style video. This video works well as it has something tangible behind it, something I can work with, something I can generate reasonable discussion with. 
I think I'll leave most of the speculation for us to discuss over in the comment section. On that note people, get interacting, what do you think of Infusion's more official showing? Do you think Armour 4 will be better for it? Something you've seen but I haven't? Just get commenting. Leave a like if you've enjoyed the video, and subscribe for more news, mod showcases, playthroughs, and other random stuff I like to put out there. Alright guys and girls, stay safe, make sure you say <laughs> off to COVID for me, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!